Hello, I'm Simon Whistler, you're watching the Today I Found Our YouTube channel, and in the video today we're looking at whether aspartame is bad for you. A quick online search of aspartame will provide you with numerous opinions about this artificial sweetener. Some claim it causes things like cancer, seizures, multiple sclerosis, lupus, memory problems, and even brain tumors. Just about every governmental organization in the world regulating food products have deemed it safe for human consumption, though. But, you know, just about every governing body in the world still gets the sodium raises blood pressure myth wrong, despite overwhelming science scientific evidence to the contrary. So let's not take their word on the whole aspartame thing. In an attempt to provide some sanity to the controversy, let's take an in-depth look at this sweet, supposed compound of death and see if we can't make sense of the madness. Aspartame was first developed by G. D. Searle & Co. in 1965. In 1974, it gained approval from the FDA as a food additive. The benefit of using aspartame over sugar is the result of how sweet it is. Sugar and aspartame both contain about 4 calories per gram. However, aspartame is about 180 times sweeter than sugar. Thus, you need much less to get the same perception of sweetness. This is the reason it works so well as a low-calorie sweetener. Aspartame is made of the two amino acids, phenylalanine and aspartic acid, and the alcohol, methanol. All of the health concerns regarding this sweet supplement are a result of what these three things can do to the body. The question then becomes, do the three parts of aspartame cause health problems? The quick answer is yes, at high enough levels they do, but please don't stop watching here. The quick answer isn't the whole answer in this case. So if high doses of aspartame are harmful, why are they allowed in our food? It turns out low doses aren't harmful, and we even need these amino acids to perform certain functions within the body. In fact, phenylalanine and aspartic acid are either produced by our bodies from many other foods, or are already found naturally in our diets. Methanol, more commonly known as wood alcohol, is definitely not needed by our bodies. If you're wondering why it's allowed in aspartame, that's because it's already found in many drinks like wine, whiskey, and beer. As you might have guessed from the fact that humans have been ingesting these for ages at low levels, it seems that methanol has no long-term consequences. That said, anything we take into our bodies in high enough doses can be harmful. Arguably, the most basic of human needs is water, and even water in high doses can kill you in what is being called water intoxication. In the end, almost everything we take in needs to fall within a certain range to be beneficial, or at least not overly harmful. Some things, even in minuscule doses, can be deadly. For many others, it takes large doses to have lasting negative effects. The phrase, everything in moderation, comes to mind here. Since we already have aspartame's three ingredients in many of the foods we eat, the question of aspartame's safety is, more appropriately, are the levels found in aspartame and the dose you may be ingesting high enough to cause unwanted health effects? To answer that, I'll go into a little more depth on the aforementioned three things that make up aspartame. Aspartic acid is one of the many amino acids that help make the numerous proteins that our bodies use. It helps the liver by aiding in the removal of ammonia, and is involved in the production of antibodies created by the immune system. It can be found in many different types of foods like asparagus, avocados, sugar beets, sausages, and molasses. Too much aspartic acid can be seen in several disease processes like Lou Gehrig's disease, epilepsy, and certain strokes. Unfortunately for those fighting against aspartame, the levels seen in these conditions are several fold higher than can be achieved by eating aspartame at recommended amounts. There has also never been a direct cause and effect shown between these diseases and increased aspartic acid intake. Methanol in general does result in some unwanted reactions within the body. Specifically, it's taken up by the cells of the body, and the production of formaldehyde and formic acid are the result. Formaldehyde at high levels will cause proteins to form abnormally. The result is proteins that no longer function. Formic acid at high levels will cause abnormal metabolic processes within cells, causing them to cease functioning. The result is death to that cell due to a lack of energy. This is because it disrupts the organelle responsible for the cell's metabolism, known as your mitochondria. 
Some cells within the body are extremely sensitive to formic acid, specifically the ones in the optic nerve. This is why blindness is associated with methanol poisoning. So does aspartame produce enough methanol to harm people? Well, probably not. There are numerous foods we eat every day that have the same or even higher amounts of methanol than aspartame. Beer and wine aside, foods like tomatoes and tomato juice and citrus fruits and their associated juices are great examples here. This brings us to the last ingredient of aspartame, phenylalanine. There is a rare disorder called phenylketonuria, affecting about 1 in 10,000 people. This ailment leaves your body with an inability to break down phenylalanine. Left untreated, toxic levels of phenylalanine build up. The results can be things like developmental disorders, cardiac rhythm problems, seizures, and severe learning disabilities. Fortunately, most babies born in the developed world are tested for this disorder, and treatment usually involves diet control. Diet control because there are many foods that contain higher levels of phenylalanine than aspartame, specifically the many different types of proteins we take in. Knowing this disorder exists, the FDA requires that aspartame products be labeled labeled specifically for phenylketonuria patients. Like any food additive evaluated by the FDA, there is an extensive process that takes place before manufacturers are allowed to put it in our foods. When the FDA first approved aspartame as an additive, there were numerous controversies surrounding its approval. These controversies revolved around the studies the FDA looked at advocating aspartame safety. That said, since its initial distributing to the masses, there have been countless new studies performed looking at aspartame safety. Numerous other reviews of the research have been conducted by several agencies, including the FDA and the European Food Safety Authority EFSA. The most recent was conducted by the EFSA and issued on December 10, 2013. The review looked at almost all studies performed on aspartame, in animals and humans alike. Knowing there is such a large controversy surrounding the supplement, the EFSA's independent panel of experts issued an open public call for any data, comments, or concerns on aspartame. According to Alicia Mortensen, chair of the EFSA's panel, this opinion represents one of the most comprehensive risk assessments of aspartame ever undertaken. The panel concluded that aspartame does not cause cancer at the levels consumed by humans, and it doesn't cause problems during pregnancy. Overall, there were no safety concerns at the current ADI, acceptable daily intake, of 40 mg per kilogram of body weight. For your reference, according to the American Cancer Society ACS, there are on average about 180 mg of aspartame in a typical 12-ounce can of diet soda. So an adult weighing 165 pounds would need to drink about 16 cans of diet soda per day to exceed the recommended limit, which itself is said drastically below dangerous thresholds. Specifically, according to the ACS, the acceptable daily intake is set at about 100 times less than the smallest amount that might cause health concerns based on studies done in lab animals. Not that you'd really be able to drink that much in reality, but if you did manage to drink 1,600 cans of diet soda in one day, that's one every 54 seconds, you'd have much bigger problems to worry about than your aspartame intake. Even though the EFSA's extremely comprehensive review should have put this issue to rest, there are researchers who still think they didn't go far enough. Eric Millstone, a science and food policy expert at the University of Sussex in the UK, wrote an open letter to colleagues in response to the EFSA's review. In it, he states the panel knowingly ignored studies showing negative effects of aspartame and deemed them unreliable, all while studies showing no ill effects were deemed reliable. The initial question then still does remain. Does aspartame have negative health effects? Some studies say it can, some studies say it can't. However, every study we could find showing negative effects did so at levels not normally consumed by any human. They were also all animal studies. Again, even water will kill you if you drink too much of it. In response to the numerous animal studies that did show an increase in health problems at high levels, Dr. David Hatton, acting director of the Division of Health Effects Evaluation at the FDA, states, The legitimate attempts that have been made to confirm and replicate allegations of adverse reactions from aspartame ingestion have not been successful, and the US FDA continues to consider this to be among the most thoroughly tested of food additives, and this information continues to confirm the safety of aspartame. 
In the end, at levels recommended by health safety experts, aspartame has never been shown to result in negative health effects. Should you want to get those unwanted health problems, according to animal studies, just consume an unrealistic amount of diet soft drinks on a daily basis for several years. Just remember, you would get the same problems should you continue to take in excessive amounts of things like beers, wines, red meats, tomatoes, and sugar beets over those same few years. If you did, however, manage to drink this much soda, whether you drank it with aspartame or sugar, you're in for an awful lot of other health problems which will most likely kill you well before anything like cancer from aspartame. So I really hope you found the video informative and maybe we finally dispelled this rumor. If you did like this video, please give it a thumbs up below and subscribe to our channel for brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Also, if you have a question like this that you'd like us to answer, do leave it in the comments below. And if you see one in the comments that you would like us to answer, give it a thumbs up. We'll look at those with more favor and create some videos based on those suggestions. So do that below in the comments section. Also, if you like this video, check out some of our other videos over there on the right. And thank you for watching.